welcome to the United States Naval Academy. You're all here this evening because you have been loyal, passionate, and steadfast supporters of the largest, most ambitious fundraising initiative in Naval Academy history. One we celebrate tonight, one we call called to serve, daring to lead. Tonight is a true celebration of all that's been accomplished since the campaign began in 2012. To date, this campaign and you have raised some $350 million in support of the Naval Academy. And we have a clear path to reaching $370 million by year end. It's an extraordinary achievement and one we've reached together. I'm glad, I'm so grateful for your commitment and your many contributions. The words that we use to describe this campaign are significant. Help shape the leaders who need more of everything. Change the course of history for our Naval Academy, our nation, and the world. Uncommon leaders on whose honor, intelligence, physical prowess, preparedness, this nation and the world depend. These words describe our brigade of midshipmen. And in so many ways, our celebration tonight is about them. It's about the impact that they will have on the world around them and the, the challenges that they must face, as well as the role that we as alumni, parents, and friends must play to prepare them for the extraordinary challenges and responsibilities that lie ahead. Tonight, you'll hear from three of those midshipmen. And when we conclude the formal portion of our program, you have a chance to explore a series of stations that introduce many of the priorities and programs supported by Call to Serve, Daring to Lead. These priorities run the gamut from the Center for Cybersecurity Studies to international programs to project-based learning to our excellent athletic excellence programs and to our future Alumni Association Foundation Center. Many of you have already engaged in supporting one, of, one or more of these areas. But we hope tonight provides an opportunity to better understand the depth and breadth of the impact that philanthropy has on behalf of the Academy and the Brigade. To reaffirm your commitment to the Academy and hopefully to inspire you to continue to serve as an advocate and champion of the Academy and the work of the United States Naval Academy Alumni Association and Foundation. Thank you very much and thank you very, I can't tell you from the depth of my heart, the support of the mission of the Naval Academy is critically important to all of us. Uh, still on. Sorry. <laughs> we practice this too. <laughs> It's our hope <laughs> that I get off the stage sooner rather than later. <laughs> it's our hope to keep our remarks and presentations tonight brief and to allow you to hear more, very brief, <laughs> and to allow you to hear more from the midshipmen currently benefiting from your support. We also invite you to enjoy the performances featuring midshipmen, such as the Midshipmen String Quartet, that played during our cocktail hour reception and the midshipmen pipe and drum and highland dancers that opened our program. Those groups and many others benefit directly from the midshipmen welfare fund, one of our campaign priorities. And we can think of no better way of illustrating the value of that investment than by showcasing the talents of the midshipmen themselves. So our work at the Naval Academy Alumni Association and Foundation is driven by the needs of today's Academy and the Brigade of the Shipman, whose development as junior officers and leaders of character and competence is crucial, not just to the future of our Navy and Marine Corps, but that of our nation and to the world. We serve and support the leadership and vision established by 
Vice Admiral Ted Carter, the class of 1981. He's our Naval Academy Superintendent. For those of us who served with him before, we know him as Slapshot, who wraps up his fifth and final year of distinguished tour. It's distinguished tours of soup. He'll finish up next summer. We could not have asked for a greater partner in this campaign. He too embodies the spirit of this campaign. He too was called to serve, and he dares to lead, and we're grateful for it. Please welcome Vice Admiral Ted Carter. Welcome back to our alumni, to parents, our friends, our supporters. This is an incredibly special night. Now before I say a couple words, I'd be remiss if I did not just take a moment to reflect on this very special place that we are. This is Dahlgren Hall. It's one of the oldest buildings here in the Naval Academy grounds. Construction started here in 1898, finished in 1903. The building is named for Rear Admiral John Dahlgren. He was a weaponeer for the Navy. <coughs> and this building was originally an armory. But in its 113 year, 115 year history, it has uh, held some of the most remarkable events in our Naval Academy history. Just think in 1905, Chester Nimitz graduated right here where you are sitting. In fact, this place has been uh, home to 54 graduations from 1903 to 1957. It actually holds the record for the most number of graduations that we've had at any place here at the United States Naval Academy. And this is the last year we'll be able to say that. The Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium for the class of 2019, when they hold their graduation, that will be the 54th graduation there, dating back to 1965. So this is a special moment in time to be here to celebrate what you are all doing for our United States Naval Academy. And let's not also forget on April 24th, 1906, arguably the father of our Navy, John Paul Jones, was laid to rest here. <coughs> President Teddy Roosevelt came here for that funeral. That happened right here where we're sitting. And of course for me personally, from 1975 to 2006, this was the home of Navy hockey. I was a proud and privileged member of the class of 1981. I played here as a plebe in 1977 all the way to 1981. I might have actually scored a couple goals right about where this spot is, although I might have been a little outside of my range. In the 20th century, America went to war to fight against fascism and then overcome a long Cold War against communism. Throughout it all, the United States led the free world, and behind the power of our ideas and the moral example of our leaders, who fought for a society based on liberty, equality, and justice for all. Many of those Americans who fought for our freedoms came from our beloved academy. And some of them sit amongst us right here in Dahlgren Hall tonight. But now the world is entering a new era in which armed conflict is just one of many methods of attack. Nations have engaged nations by hacking their cyber networks and then spreading their disinformation to cover their assault. <coughs> Amazingly, land and maritime territory have the potential to be swallowed up without a battle ever being declared. This new world needs new leaders. Men and women representing a cross-section of America who are developed not just morally, mentally, and physically, but men and women who will uphold our nation's laws, defend our interests, and be ready to fight and win from the edges of the South China Sea to our nation's networks to space. This academy is where those leaders are trained and educated. The Naval Academy is one of the only institution that recruits and welcomes young men and women from every walk of life, in every state, in every territory. Brings them together and forges their diverse backgrounds and viewpoints into one effective team. We train our midshipmen in sailing, small arms, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. We teach them philosophy, ethics, mathematics, physics, 
in cutting-edge cyber operations. And we entrust them into leadership roles that prepare them to lead Americans around the world. These are the skills and these are the people we need to lead the United States into the next century. Your support is critical to our mission's growth and readiness. While the government funds the core programs that develop midshipmen and commission qualified officers, your support makes them elite. Your philanthropic giving enables us to attract the best and brightest across the nation and gives them truly amazing and unique opportunities. Thanks to you, we can send midshipmen to lead troops of the summit of Denali, the highest peak in North America with the National Outdoor Leadership School. Thanks to you, we can sail and win the prestigious Newport to Bermuda race in high performance yachts. Thanks to you, we can send midshipmen abroad for international programs that build critical language skills and regional expertise that better prepares them for their role in the fleet. Thanks to you, we can compete in nationally ranked varsity and club sports. Last year alone, with the highest win percentage in Naval Academy history at nearly 68%, we won 16 conference championships to include winning the Patriot League President's Cup for the incredible fifth year in a row. Additionally, our triathlon and women's softball teams, both club sports of our 16 club sports, were national champions last year. Thanks to you, your support is helping us outfit Hopper Hall with cutting edge technology and a sensitive compartmented information facility that will allow us to teach at the classified level and prepare midshipmen for the ongoing battle in cyberspace. Your support makes the brand new academy graduates the best trained and the best prepared naval officers in the world. These are the leaders our military and our nation needs. It is your help alongside the dreams and efforts of students all over the nation that brings the best and brightest here to the Academy and gives our nation a bright future. Now as I end here and I depart the stage, unfortunately I do have to go to another event, I'm going to ask my wife Linda to come up here for just a minute because I want you to see as we are entering into our fifth and final year here as your 62nd superintendent and the first lady of the Naval Academy that we are your team. And as I told you about the history of Dahlgren, I might have left out one small part. On a cold Saturday night in January 20th, January 20th of 1979, I met Linda about 10 feet right behind me. So 40 years this January 20th is where we met right here. So again, uh, thank you for your support. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our Naval Academy. Go Navy, beat Army. Most of us who've been around for a while come to understand that adversity builds great strength and tenacity brings great reward. And tonight I have the pleasure of introducing a young man that has clearly learned that lesson. Midshipman Jonathan Denler knew the deep conviction he that he belonged at the Naval Academy when he was very young. And he persisted, for he applied three times before he was accepted. And I don't know if that was his challenge or our problem that it took so long. Since here, he's at, he has thrived. He studied abroad in Japan. He served as a plebe summer regimental commander and as a second class squad leader, hoping for service assignment to the Marine Corps ground. And in July 2016, while helping to lead a Boy Scout camping trip, the Chipman Denler reacted with assertiveness and bravery and courage when lightning struck, killing one scout and an accompanying adult. He located the camp radio and attempted to make an emergency call to bring assistance to his campsite. When radio communications failed, he canoed over one and a half miles at night in 60 mile an hour winds and lightning 
to evacuate one uninjured scout and return with aid from the Prairie Portage Ranger Station. He calmly conveyed the situation to the ranger, who, under the guidance of Midshipman Demler, returned to the scene with needed medical supplies. <clears throat> Midshipman Demler's actions earned him the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for heroism. I think we'd all agree that this is the type of leader the world needs more of today and tomorrow. So allow me to introduce Midshipman Jonathan Demler of the class of 2019. Admiral Mullen, thank you, sir. <coughs> Iwo Jima, the invasion beach, one year ago. Myself and a friend from VMI are standing in the water on the beach, about knee high, turned around looking back at the island. Now, it's a little different than it used to be, it's a little greener now, and this is still something that is a once in a lifetime opportunity, a challenge that we we have to try. So looking back at the island, we take off running, we run up the beach, and we hit it as hard as we can. And the sand, the, the loose volcanic sand, it's, it's actually okay to walk on, but the faster you try to run, the more you step, the more pressure you put behind your feet, the more you sink and the harder it gets. And so we're running, we're running, we're running, and we're going up the beach, and we hit a big sand dune. And we think we're just gonna go up this thing and it's gonna be over, and we run into the dune, we get there, and we just, just kinda go right into it, sink right in. And so we have to crawl our way up and we get to the top and we're out of breath and we're not done. We've actually fallen behind our tour group now so we have to run down the beach a little more. And we go down there, we're running still, and one of our friends, a classmate, a Japanese military classmate actually, turns around, puts his hand out for a high five, like he normally would. And we high five him back, like we normally would. We don't think much of it at the moment. Then later on, the significance dawns on us that not many Americans who have run up the beaches of Iwo Jima have been high-fived by the first Japanese person they saw. <laughs> a lot has changed since the Second World War. I was fortunate enough and lucky enough to spend a semester last year abroad at the Japanese National Defense Academy. And up there, that's me and all my roommates. Me and those guys did pretty much everything together for about four months. These are opportunities we have here and I was fortunate enough to have because of philanthropy at the Naval Academy and what it allows us to do. There are lessons you learn doing something like that that you can't learn anywhere else. A military leader today has to understand geopolitics, the people we work with, and the relationships that go into that. And at the core, there's something very real. There's a really tangible human relationship and yeah, you can learn about it in a classroom, but you can't really feel it and you can't really know it. Stuff like this is how we actually learn. So there's another story I'd like to take a moment to tell you real quick. I was also fortunate enough to spend time on a foreign exchange cruise with the Japanese Navy. So I actually met a Japanese ship in London uh, and we sailed from London to Lithuania and I was actually part of the Japanese military's first ever, ever official visit to the country of Lithuania, which I never thought I'd be able to say. Uh, we left from Lithuania to Belgium, and us midshipmen left from Belgium. Now, I, I don't know, has anyone ever been to London? So, yeah, imagine being on a ship in the middle of the River Thames, such that they have to open up Tower Bridge for you to leave. And there we were, Myself, a newly minted youngster, Herndon was less than two months ago at this point, and I'm standing on the bridge of a Japanese destroyer, a nation who a few decades before had been an enemy of ours, and there I am with Tower Bridge open ahead of us, and British people lined the streets on the side waving goodbye to us, because seeing a Japanese ship leave in the middle of the river is not something they see every day, and they were teaching us how to sail out of a port. <coughs> Opportunities like that are rare, but they're incredible. And I honestly, when, when, this, when these things were happening, I never thought that I might actually have an opportunity to thank some of the people who made this happen, and I'm sure some of you are actually in the audience tonight, so thank you. It's, it's been incredible. 
and both myself and a lot of my underclass really appreciate it more than you could know. So, thank you. Good evening. I'm Paul Storff, the class of 1989. What about 89? I think there's a perception amongst most of society about what a cyber degree looks like or should look like. I'm proud that the Nail Academy, our program is well-rounded, interdisciplinary, multifaceted, with a solid foundation technology of what we think should be cyber and we believe is cyber. It contains programming, computer architecture, data structures, networks, mobile computing, information assurance, cryptography, forensics, but we also dedicate time to study policy, law, ethics, and the human factors of cyber, quite important in this day and age. The midshipmen choose a cyber operations major, and there are now 250 of them in the brigade, which ranks as the fourth most popular major in the brigade. And a significant number of them are women, 31% to be exact. Clear our next speaker, midshipman Sidney Frankenberg of the class of 2019. Welcome, Sydney. Thank you, Captain Tortoya. Today, I'm learning how to protect our country from those who wish to do us harm through their keyboards. The Naval Academy is full of tenacious, hardworking students who are dedicated to serving their countries. Every day, I feel the pressure to prove I belong here, and that only motivates me to work harder. Training midshipmen to wage digital warfare is not what the Naval Academy founders had in mind in 1845, if they even could have imagined what the internet would become. In the fall of 2017, I spent a semester studying abroad in Seoul, South Korea. In the middle picture, or on the left picture here, you can see a picture of me and some friends at the DMZ. In South Korea, I was the only woman, I was the only foreign woman in my data structures and computer science courses. It occurred to me then that while techno technological innovations can sweep quickly through a country, letting go of xenophobia and misogyny can take much longer. I came home to the United States with a renewed understanding of the importance of showing kindness and compassion to outsiders. My experiences in South Korea helped me to found the Women in Cybersecurity and Computing Club at the Naval Academy. We were told we would have no interest, that our demographic was too small. One year later, we have over 200 people on our emailing list. <laughs> and we are part of a much larger movement. Recently, I joined 21,000 other people who happen to be both women and technically minded at the Grace Hopper Women in Computer Science Celebration in Houston, Texas. It's the largest gathering of women technologists in the world. Navy Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, the conference's namesake, believed women needed to be at the table, developing the technology that would affect us all. I am so proud to be able to follow in her footsteps in some small way. And I'm even prouder to think that future Naval Academy cyber majors will study in a building named in her honor. This semester, I am being trained by two cyberspace legends, Mr. Rick Leggett and Mr. Chris Inglis, both former deputy directors of the National Security Agency. These men leverage real-world experiences in the classroom with stories, only unclassified ones of course, <laughs> that are nothing short of jaw-dropping. The support I have received from them and other Naval Academy faculty <clears throat> has been inspiring, and I am so grateful for the role they have played in shaping me into the scholar and leader that I am today. I am so grateful for their support and for yours as well. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Grubman of the class of 1980. Yeah! Now, tonight, we're in the cone of silence, so I'm going to tell you a few secrets about Navy and midshipmen. 
We are not Ohio State. We are not Alabama. We are not Stanford. I could go on. And with rare exceptions, our athletes are not going pro in any sport. They are going pro in leadership. And you're seeing that emerge right before your eyes, time after time, with people that you know and the midshipmen that are coming up on stage. That is why Navy Athletics, no matter the team, no matter the level of competition, merit my investment, merit Betsy's investment, and merit your investment. And all those qualities and all that focus are on display when you visit with midshipmen leaders. Therefore, it is my privilege to introduce and ask you to welcome someone who represents that, a standout Navy lacrosse player and brigade commander, midshipman Ian Burgoyne of the class of 2019. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Grubbin. I appreciate that. I've been playing lacrosse since I was a little kid, and it's had a tremendous impact on my life, especially here at the Naval Academy. Time on the field has taught me key virtues like self-sacrifice, teamwork, determination, and being comfortable with failure. And there's definitely been a lot of failure. I don't think athletes totally realize the key skills we're developing in the heat of competition. Skills like grace under pressure, decisiveness, and clear communication. But there is one virtue that I think the Naval Academy teaches better than any other civilian college or any other institution. And it's a virtue that isn't often practiced by our counterparts in the civilian world or professional athletes either. And that virtue is humility. Humility is tough to talk about, too, because the second you start proclaiming how humble you are, you've just demonstrated the lack thereof. <laughs> so I promise, I promise I won't do that tonight. But I will share a story. Four long years ago, when I was an impressionable 18-year-old, I woke up to my alarm at 0445 to catch my 0530 morning lift. But this was no ordinary Friday morning. The night before had been service assignment and I was stoked to see the seniors on my team who had just received their new careers. I jumped out of bed, pulled my shoes on, and burst into the seniors in my company's room to wake them up. My boyish grin and, and jubilant energy was met with bleary eyes and uh, less lackluster, enthusiastic greetings. <laughs> they had celebrated the night before, rightly so, into the wee hours of the morning, and it was, it was still the wee hours of the morning. Yet my energy didn't fade. I was so excited to see the other seniors as well as they moved around as we got to the weight room. And slowly we dragged our feet um, to the weight room where I was shocked to see our senior captain, Pat Kina, standing by the door, taking roll. And maybe I shouldn't have been shocked. He was the team captain, it's what he did for every single morning lift. But the night before, he had just received the service assignment to the Naval Special Warfare Community. He was on his way to becoming a Navy SEAL. And there he stood, by the door, hands steady, eyes focused, greeting everybody with a little smile or a joke. And in that moment, I don't think I realized it at the time, but on reflection now I do, he displayed true humility. For not a single second did he think that he deserved something more. No bragging, no signs of overindulgence. Just happy to be with his teammates and dedicated and devoted to the program. It's examples like that that athletics has put me in touch with. And all our athletes around the yard, be it lacrosse players, football players, whoever they are, are seeing examples like that day in and day out. Now as brigade commander, I, I think back to those examples when I was a plea that maybe have gone over my head and hope that maybe one day I can have the same impact on my fellow classmates and fellow teammates. Thank you so much for your support tonight. Thank you so much for your support of Naval Academy Athletics and for my brothers and sisters in the brigade and shipping. Thank you very much. All to serve bearing the lead, command, citizenship, and government. That's what this is all about. 
I'm so proud to work with his entire team. We've worked together for almost 10 years. The alumni leaders here tonight, this is historic. We've never been in a room together. I want all my brethren who are volunteer leaders in the alumni chapters and classes, stand up. You recognize, welcome to the, welcome to the Naval Academy campaign. First time in our history. We're all in the room together. And to my foundation board members and donors and leaders, thank you so much. We've been at this since 2000. This current campaign started in 2012. Since 2000, we've raised $750 million from the Naval Academy. From a standing jump start, where no one thought it could be done. It takes volunteers, it takes commitment, it takes service. Somebody said earlier today, Michelle Florin are here tonight? She said something that I found interesting. Her son's a first team, gonna be potentially a Navy SEAL. She said, this is what I learned from my son that I don't, I don't see anywhere else. The Naval Academy DNA is committed to service, not just in the Navy, not just in the Marine Corps, but for a lifetime. And you here tonight are committed to that lifetime service. I'm looking at Mary and Amy, class of 46. Robert would be proud tonight. He's looking down. Absolutely. On behalf of Robert, Mary is here. Gave us our first lead gift to Cyber. We had zero. She gave us our first lead gift. $60 million later, here we are. For Cyber. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Robert. The soups who've been here, Admiral Carter, Admiral Miller, Admiral Fowler. I've been working with them since 2009. This is a joint team effort. Admiral Mullen, Admiral Locklear, Admiral Ruffhead, Admiral Greeners, the secretaries of the Navy. We're here tonight standing on the shoulders of hundreds of people in the Navy Marine Corps and here tonight that are committed to excellence. How about this brigade of midshipmen here tonight? But if any of them want to run for office 20 years from now, I'm in. <laughs> because we need more of them serving not only commands and Marine Corps units, we need them serving our country. You here tonight represent that. Admiral Ryan, my great mentor, who started this foundation as a suit almost 20 years ago. I remember going to Buchanan House. Only time I'd been there before was when Kennard McKee was suit and I was in trouble for going over the wall. <laughs> that was not a pleasant visit. So the next best visit was to see Admiral Ryan at Buchanan House when he first invited Paul Johnson to be the coach. What we didn't know at that time is that Admiral Ryan was recruiting all of us to start this effort, along with Chuck Larson. And from that time forward, we formed, with Admiral Holloway's influence, the most powerful combination of alumni, and foundation leaders that are structured in higher ed today. So Admiral Ryan, I want to thank you for your continued commitment. 24 plus years of commitment I see every time there's something important. Let's give Admiral Ryan a round of applause for his commitment. To the I also want to thank our current chairs of this campaign, Ron Terwilliger, class of 63. Thank you for leaning in. You've been leaning in for over 20 years. Thank you so much for being a co-chair of this campaign. Admiral Mullen, we called you Moon Mullen when you were here. I won't go into how many things we talked about, but thank you for your mentorship. Class of 78, Dan knows this, is ranked third in the number of flag officers. That's right, Class of 78, ranked third in the number of flag officers in the history of the Naval Academy. Admiral Mullen's been a mentor to every one of them. To every one of them. So Admiral Mullen, thank you for leaning in. Who has the chairman of the Joint Chiefs helping them raise capital at the Naval Academy? Thank you, Admiral Mullen. Thank you so much. Eric Rubin, you and I met each other on the board in the early 2000s. You and Betsy have been leaning in for the longest time. You are the young buck on the Foundation Leadership Board. But you were a young buck even 20 years ago when you and I first met. Thank you to you and Betsy for leaning in for almost two decades and for your, your son's service to our country. Thank you, Eric and Betsy. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Sam Locklear. Sam was the guy we always stood out. You know, he's the example even in, in Eastport 
for what an admiral should look like. You know that, man. I walk to Eastport, they don't think I'm an admiral. Sam walks around Eastport, they think he's an admiral. And they're right about that. There's no confusion about that. But Sam, you represent an alumni association commitment that has been growing for over two decades. Before you, Admiral Natter. Before, before him, Admiral Abbott. Before him, Carlisle's Roast. And it goes on and on. So we stand on shoulders. But who has the former head of the Indo-Pacific Command as your Alumni Association Chairman? We're very fortunate. Thank you, Sam and Pam. Thank you so much. And then Dan Atkinson. He and I have gotten to know each other real well in this role. And Dan, I can't thank you enough personally from the bottom of my heart. I know Karen is looking at us for your philanthropy, for your commitment, and for your leadership in this country. You've taken it on, you've taken it on here. Dan is, a, is proof that you don't go for the minimum if you want to get anything done. Former chair of GM, former chair of the Carlisle Group. He and I didn't know each other, but I knew, him, I knew of him when he ran MCI. I knew of him when he set the standard for HDTV, when he set the modern standard for cellular telephone. And here he is humbly serving as our chair of our foundation. So on behalf of all of our alumni around the country and the world, thank you, Dan, and thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. So tonight, we get to meet more mids. They're great. They're the best. I couldn't get in today. The soup has a crop of talent here that we can be confident in. But if it wasn't for the margin of excellence, we wouldn't be here tonight, and these mids wouldn't have nearly the amount of capability that they're going to have going forward. So tonight you get to enjoy a variety of stations with mids, talking about things I can't spell, <laughs> but things we can be proud of. We're looking over the horizon with the investments that we've made. And so all of you who are donors and supporters of this campaign, you're taking the Naval Academy over the horizon in this century. And so we can be proud of what you're going to see tonight. At about 8.15 or so, just so you all know how it's going, there'll be a gospel choir performance, a silent drill team performance, and then we're going to sing Navy Blue and Gold. One last thing. This is for you, Ann. On behalf of all of us here, we don't talk about this enough, so thanks for reminding me of this. We couldn't do this without spouses and loved ones. Wouldn't even be here. Would, would never get to yes. So with all the spouses and loved ones who are here tonight supporting their husbands or their wives to support this campaign, campaign, please stand and be recognized. You deserve all the credit in the world. If it wasn't for you, we would not be here tonight. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We wouldn't be here. We know that. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your family commitment. And for parents who are here tonight, I know there's some parents here with grads who are not graduates of the academy and parents here of current midshipmen. Thank you for your service to the country and for allowing your children to defend our freedoms. They'll be leaders of their peers. They're well ahead of them now. And hopefully they'll be leaders of this country when they're done serving their military commitment. Enjoy the evening. Thank you so much. Go Navy. See you in about half an hour. For, for the